Hi, my name is Rihanna Hedlund and I'm here on the show Equip to talk about perimeters of purity. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Equip. We are going to be talking about an amazing subject today called Perimeters of Purity. Um, with us, we have a young woman today that um, she's an administrator. She has administrative giftings, but God has given her a special message um, for, for young people in this generation. Well, young and old, really, but specifically that she's going to share with young people. She's going to be heading to Japan soon to take this message across the ocean and into other nations and so Brianna Hedlund thank you so much for joining us today thank you yeah yeah it's good to have you here ah. um, so tell us why you became interested in the topic of purity and what you're gonna be talking about today having perimeters of purity yeah so I grew up in a Christian home and um, you know, went to Sunday school and all of these things. Um, but growing up, I really didn't have an understanding of the value of the perimeters that God had placed around me and placed around my purity. Um, I became spiritually apathetic in guarding my thoughts and the walls that God had in place around me. And when I was a teenager, I made the decision to have sex like it was no big deal. Mm -hmm. and really wasn't aware of the ramifications that would follow. Um, this started a pattern of relating to guys in this way. And um, my thoughts in terms of God were, well, I've already done it. I'm already ruined in God's eyes. So whatever, I'll just keep going. Mm. And the result of believing these lies and um, acting accordingly to them resulted in, you know, I separated myself from God and... Um, yeah, just kind of began to actually crave attention from men and just, mm. yeah, it really did impact me in that way. Um, so you saw your self-worth or your value mm -hmm. in how, you know, if men desired you. Right. Right, yeah. And there were times in there where I tried to walk in purity, but my understanding of sexual sin just wasn't accurate. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that you know, I'd feel shame and guilt and God would be displeased with me, but that I would get over it eventually and so would he. And mm -hmm. so when temptation would come, um, I would weigh the decision out and weigh out the perceived benefit of feeling, you know, loved even for a short time, feeling desired. And this would outweigh my understanding of the consequences. Mm. So, yeah, when I was 19, I, I felt God clearly speak to me about... Um, being called into a purity ministry and you know it was at this time that I I decided to follow Jesus in a relationship personal relationship beyond just my parents faith and um, so I went to IOM actually and there there I received this this just really clear prophetic word about um, that God would be using me in the future for mm -hmm. just speaking about the mes message of the gospel to people who are caught in sexual sin Wow yeah. and um, you know, at my lowest point, this was so much my struggle, though, that I was actually thinking and consciously thinking about trading God's calling on my life so that I could continue in my sin. Mm. So God was calling you to preach the gospel in the specific area that you were struggling with. Yeah. And so you were in crisis at that point. Mm -hmm. Do I say yes or do I continue in my sin? Yeah. So what did you start to understand and learn about sexuality? So actually seven and a half years ago, God brought me to this crossroads point. Mm -hmm. And it was this point where I knew that he was giving me the choice to continue walking down this path or come to face him. And, you know, his arms were wide open and his face was full of so much love for me. And um, he was giving me the opportunity to come to him and where he would give me victory in this area and fully um, deal with this sin, that it would stop cropping up in my life. And 
so that's kind of where the restoration began mm -hmm. at that point and so over these past seven and a half years God has been teaching me about um, sexuality and you know I had been compartmentalizing sexuality and sex and just in thinking that it was just something that was not that was bad and not something that was actually God given and right. God originated and God actually created us to be sexual beings and he just set perimeters around that and asked us to you know follow the instructions which he says keep the marriage bed holy and mm -hmm. this is where we're expressing our sexuality is in the marriage bed and so um yeah mm -hmm. so you're single I am single <laughs> yes guys she's single Anyways, I'm just <laughs> but kidding. I'm moving to Japan yeah, so. she's moving to Japan <laughs> <laughs> um so now you, you, you talk in your teaching, when you're teaching on these perimeters of purity, you're, you taught about one thing God showed you was like this hedge that he placed around you to give you that pure, the, it's, and it's an analogy really, mm -hmm. I call it the hedge analogy, um, about um, putting these perimeters around you. Can you kind of unwrap and explain that to us, what that, yeah. what that is? Um, so this analogy comes from Psalm 139, 5 to 6, which says, You have hedged me behind in and before and mm. laid your hand upon me, and such knowledge is too wonderful for me. And um, this analogy just kind of, I was really thinking about this and picturing this um, luscious green hedge that surrounds me and surrounds each of us. And it's just a space that God gives us for, you know, when we're walking in his, in obedience to the things that he has for us. And it's this place that we are protected within. And it's this place with, um, there's no shame. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like in the Garden of Eden, he gave this garden to Adam and Eve and he filled it with gifts and with his very presence. And he said, you know, the perimeter is not to eat of this tree. Mm -hmm. And so similar to that in the area of sexuality, we're, we have this hedge around us and the perimeters are um, following his instructions about this. And, you know, some of the some of the ways that we may be tempted to walk outside of that would be, um, you know, like premarital sex or adultery if you're married mm -hmm. or um, lust and watching pornography mm -hmm. and those types of things and just keeping um, our obedience to God. Um, within those perimeters right. so yeah so obedience that's a good word yeah. um you know and i think um you know that's something that is a real need to keep these perimeters of, of obedience and um you know you as a single person that's a constant need us as married people you know we we need to stay that so explain why obedience is so important why obey why obey god in this yeah. area yeah and so you know as as a christian kid growing up this is something that i really didn't get uh, for a long time, I just thought that the rules that I was learning in Sunday school is just because, and God just had these rules that he had for us to follow, and there wasn't any reason for them. But I learned so deeply into my core that there are great reasons for them. Um, I didn't understand why God asked for my obedience in this area, you know, but he, it was because he wanted me to be free, and he knew that outside of obeying him in this area, it just brings captivity. When I was wandering outside of these perimeters, through my disobedience, my mind and my spirit, my heart, these were all being impacted and um, not protected. And, you know, there's a verse in Psalm 106, 36, it says, they serve their idols, which became a snare to them. And I really experienced this, actually. And so really just feel that um, when we are walking in disobedience this is the reason that god said mm -hmm. to obey because outside of that there is entanglement yeah. and yeah. stuff um you know for me i i became ensnared to certain idolatry like idolatry of sex and idolatry mm -hmm. of male attention and all of these things and it was the snare that jesus set me free from mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so um you know so you talk about the snare can you kind of um explain you know, because some people watching might be able to relate to this. Can you kind of explain, you know, what this snare was or this battle that was going on inside of you during this time and the destructive effects of it? Well, it's just that I made some willful choices and I understand now that God had instructions around those willful choices because outside of that, it was like the enemy was, was able to ensnare me in these things. And 
um, it's the exact opposite of what God wants for us. And, you know, there is in God's kingdom, there's freedom in perimeters. Mm -hmm. And when we think about the perimeters, we think um, that it's this space that uh, kind of like a cage and outside is freedom and you're, you don't have yeah. any restrictions yeah. and all this stuff, but actually, yeah, it's, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because with that, you get wrapped up in shame, you get wrapped up in unhealthy relationships, um, uh, you know, looking for your value in your sexuality mm -hmm. and instead of in God. Mm -hmm. And that really leads to an empty, you know, to an empty and void space inside of you that you, you, you can't fill when you go outside of those perimeters, right? So um, how did you get healing and restoration in this? I assume you got healing and restoration in this area. Can you <laughs> tell us if that's the case and, and how you uh, went yeah. about it? So God is the mighty restorer. Um, everything that the enemy, um, you know, has planned for our destruction, like God redeems that and he restores that. Um, one of my favorite verses is from Hosea. It says, I will heal their waywardness and love them freely. And, you know, that's, that's just that, like, the waywardness that we walk in, all of the things that um, were harmed during that time, God comes in and he heals them. And then his love for us is just, like, free and so huge and abounding. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, at the point that that crossroads that I was speaking about, seven and a half years ago, um, when I asked God to um, help me and release my foot from that snare, like mm -hmm. I needed his freedom and yeah. I needed him to cut this out of my life once and for all. And when I asked him and received his forgiveness, this is the point that he just began to wash me and restore me and restore my hopes and my dreams and my heart and everything that was um, stolen and damaged during my wandering time. Yeah. And God will heal and he will yes, restore. Yeah, um, you know, one of the things I think, um, you know, as, as young women, when we go through that, when we know we've gone, you know, when, when we have a consciousness that we have gone outside those perimeters of purity, we feel like our innocence has been stolen, mm -hmm. you know, in a lot of ways. And the Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. So our innocence gets stolen but what God wants to do is restore that innocence, restore that purity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he says, even though our sins were like scarlet, he will make them white as snow. Yeah. So he can restore the innocence. And I believe that's what he's done in your life. Yes, yeah. um, you know, and, and you have such a heart to take this message out to help others to do it. Yeah. Um, so dealing with temptation. I'm, are you ever tempted? Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Exactly. So what advice would you have um, for those who struggle with temptation in sexuality, specifically outside of God's plan, outside of his perimeters? Yeah, so over these past years, um, as I've been waiting and trusting God in this area specifically, um, when temptation would come to, you know, take matters into my own hands and... Um, and just believing, you know, tempted to believe the lie that God doesn't have a plan for me mm -hmm. and he doesn't have good things in store for me and all of these things. Um, during those times when I can't see any evidence that God is, um, that he does have a plan for me and there's a purpose in all of this. Um, you know, I, I would really remember who God is and remember who, like, his character and mm -hmm. what his character is. There's a song that um, is sung by Brian and Katie Torwalt, and the lyrics in that song say, when I don't understand, I will choose you. Mm -hmm. When I don't understand, I will choose to trust you. And that commitment has won um, spiritual battles in my life between my flesh and my will to obey and wait and rest in God's timing and mm -hmm. his goodness. Yeah. Um, James 1.14 says, Each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So it's really, um, temptations come. And so back to that hedge analogy, temptations will come when we're within that hedge. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, we have the choice to check those thoughts at the door yeah. um, or 
let ourselves be dragged away by our desires and then we're outside of that hedge, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and as we learned in another episode, when that temptation comes to invite God in. Yeah. As soon as that temptation comes, not after you've already, you know, been um, fantasizing and imagining it yeah. or even fallen into it, but, but before that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's and good. also really listening to that still small voice because you know, when we keep our spirit sensitive to hearing God and he, we can hear his leading and he mm-hmm. says like, don't go there, go, go here. Yeah. And we can hear it, yeah. but we can also, um, you know, numb that hearing for mm-hmm. ourselves as well. So yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And one of the things I know I've taught on in the past and when it comes to temptation is that, um, you know, sometimes when we focus on sin in our lives and trying to fix the sin in our life, we become sin conscious. Mm -hmm. And so it's harder to overcome. So not to be so focused on don't sin, don't sin, don't sin, but to be focused on God, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life. And I want to serve you, you know, purify my heart, Mm -hmm. um, um, create in me a clean heart, renew that right spirit in me. Like King David cried out Mm -hmm. after he committed adultery. After he went outside the perimeters of purity, he said, create in me a pure heart, oh God. You know, and and so when we focus on God and asking him to cleanse us and restore us and purify us, then then it gets easier. You know, then it gets easier to deal with those temptations and and not to go outside those boundaries. And when we remember who is for us and who is against us Mm -hmm. and who is the source of those temptations, it actually, it's like, God is for us and the devil wants nothing but destruction for us. So why do I even want to to entertain that that temptation, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, So moving forward um, with perimeters of purity, you know, um, how do we establish that in our lives? How do we move forward, walk in it, walk in holiness kind of thing and, and um, make sure that we're not being pulled away by these temptations? Yeah, James 1, 25 says, the person who continues to study God's perfect laws that make people free and who remains committed to them will be blessed. People like that don't merely listen and forget. They actually do what God's laws say. <laughs> So, you know, the Word of God is so important and something that I want to be in. I want to be reading His Word because He's given us this manual. He's mm-hmm. just given it to us. Yes, and it's that's right. How, yeah. how to live. Yeah. And too many times we don't really read yeah. it and we don't not only just read it, but we don't actually walk out what it says. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And just... Holiness and, and walking in purity is really about what you were saying for King David's cry, just mm-hmm. about the heart and yeah. praying that just keeping an open hand to um, whatever there is in our life and saying, God, if there's things that are displeasing to you, burn them up, like get yeah. rid them of me and purify my heart. And listen for the voice of the Lord too. You know, I think, you know, obey, be obeying the word, but also listen to the voice of the Lord when because sometimes we don't know that something might lead to something destructive. We don't know that that friendship might turn corrupt. So it's like, Holy Spirit, you know, um, speak to me, you know, and he, and he will. I know one time, um, before I was married, you know, I had a friendship and, um, I was invited over just for some innocent pizza and movie kind of thing. And I was at my doorway and the Holy Spirit said, don't you go. And so I was literally frozen at the doorway. My mind was like, but why not? But inside, there was something inside. There was a Holy Spirit speaking to me and saying, stop, mm-hmm. right? And it's, so when it's obeying the word, listening to the voice of God, um, God has a heart for us. We're his sons and daughters. He wants to protect us, but we have to be yielded, surrendered, submitting to him and asking him and, and, and willing to listen to that. Um, willing to listen to that because obedience is a choice mm-hmm. right we can yeah. choose to obey but we can also willfully choose to disobey so obedience is is a choice but god will be there to help us he'll always get, provide a way out yeah yeah, yeah and cool. sometimes when you're in places where you you're really you can't even pray for yourself mm-hmm. asking friends to pray for you yeah. like we're part of a body yeah. and not just by ourselves yeah. i have friends that i text and i know that they'll pray for me when i really yeah 
I'm really going through something. And, and accountability too. Accountability, right? yeah. That's so important. Mm -hmm. so, no, that's good. Um, so you wrote a poem, and I love your poem, <laughs> um, but I just, I really want you to, it's on this topic, and uh, so could you read it and share it with us? Yeah, so I wrote this in 2013. Um, Sex outside of God's perimeters creates ever-growing distance. Shame, guilt, self-hate, forgetting who God said we were, God as a priority falls to the back of the line. At least one of these things will bring her to run from him instead of to him. And then, suddenly, all of this looks so desirable, so irresistible. She's too far from God now, and this feels so right, so justifiable. She gives her life to it. He never stops calling to her to come back. He misses her. He calls, he sends messengers with his invitation, he intercedes. But her heart is engaged elsewhere. His passionate urgency feels like a whisper, a nudge that is easily disregarded. She is being wrapped up in vile chains that at times feel so right, but are steadily emptying her, emptying her of the promise she had once known. But as an empty heart, empty of joy, empty of herself, she can hear once again, hear him who is the lover of her soul, whispering his steadfast love, extending his steadfast invitation to come out of the mud she had loved and made home. His tender love and compassion translate into a mighty war cry against the enemy of her soul, and he annihilates those chains that had made her prisoner. And her new journey begins with him. With each step, he heals her heart and makes her whole. Her right hand desperately clasps his, and he holds it firm. With her left hand, she offers him the pen with which to write in the rest of her life. It's an amazing poem. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Um, you know, if you listen to that poem, I'm sure it had an impact on you, or, or share this episode with other people, with your sons, your daughters that might be struggling, you know, having these perimeters of purity. Um, so to conclude, Rihanna, can you summarize um, what you've learned through your own struggles, but also through your own growth mm. in this area and just, just in you know, three or four points? So I've learned that the decision to sin actually matters. Mm. Um, I've learned that when I stumble, instead of feeling shame that God is angry at me, I will immediately look up and see my father's face smiling on me with mm. love, you know? And he just, his heart is always to restore. Um, I want God's way far more than I want my own way because I know that he knows what's best for me and far more than I could know for myself and his desires for good things. And also, if we want to walk in purity, we really need to desire to walk in purity and mm -hmm. desire to obey God and hear his instructions and commit to follow them. Right. So desire to do what is right. That's the best, best advice we could ever get. Do what's right. Do right, what's right in God's eyes. Do what's right in your own conscience. Um, do what's right according to the word of God. You know, and it's for our benefit. It's, um, it's for our freedom, like Rihanna has been talking about today. Um, so Rihanna, you know, some people might be watching and they might say, you know what, I've strayed outside. I can relate to you. My story is similar. Um, but I haven't yet experienced that freedom and forgiveness. Um, can you just pray with, with those that are watching today? And um, just that they would, that God would help them through this journey mm -hmm. and lead them to freedom and lead them to restoration. Jesus, thank you so much for um, the sacrifice that you made on the cross that allows us to be completely free, completely free of, of any stain from our sin, completely unblemished and pure because of what you did on the cross, Lord Jesus. I pray for, for everyone who is watching that um, has struggled in the area of sexual sin. I pray that, that they will know your love and know yes. that um, to turn to you is just to turn to a father with so much love for them and that you just want to restore them. They can just come and lay it all out at the foot of the cross and you come and you you pour restoration on them. I just pray for, um, 
for, for that, that spiritual muscle to be built up in each person that they can stand against the schemes of the devil and stand against the temptations and stand firm in, in knowing who they are and um, who their father is. And I just pray for, specifically for, just full healing and full restoration in lives that have been affected from sexual sin. Amen. Amen. Um, so I just want to close with the scripture. Second Timothy 2.22 says, Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue, this is the important part, pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. So I just encourage you today, if you're watching, you know, just to really um, focus your eyes, your heart, your mind, your desires uh, on the Lord, and he'll help you through this. He's the one that can bring you freedom. You know, he can, he's the one that can burn away, um, you know, temptations that are outside his perimeters. And, and so, so allow him, open your heart, allow him to do it. Cry out to the Lord, you know, cry out for his mercy, cry out for his love, for his help, and he will answer you. You know, he's, he's our father. He loves you. He's there for you. He wants to help you through every area of your life, young or old, right? No matter what you've gone through, if you're a young person that's done, you know, done things outside the perimeters of purity, if you're married and you're not, seek restoration, you know, seek forgiveness from your spouse um, and, and get counsel on it. Get counsel so that you can have your marriage and your life restored back to what God has for it. So thank you, Rihanna, for joining us. Thank you. If uh, you want more information um, on Rihanna's message about perimeters of purity, and I think she's good, probably going to be developing resources in the future, you can visit our website at equippedministries.ca, and you can just send in the contact form, and we'll be happy to help you with extra information on the topic. And uh, we just, we're just so blessed to have you here today. And thank you guys for, again, for tuning into this episode on HSBN TV.